Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning how to stack chests and label them appropriately. Valheim is a game with a lot of item management. You're going to waste a load of time looking for stuff and it'll really lower the quality of your Valheim experience. So build simple organization methods early on. First I'll show you the mechanics of stacking the chests, then we'll look into labeling them. And make the label white so it shows out and it's easier to see. To begin, we'll focus on one square, but we'll need to have our workbench set up. It all begins with these one meter wood poles. Then stack three of them on top of each other. This way we create some snap points that allow us to easily build the chest pieces. Place one of these pieces, like that, and then you don't even really need that top piece to be honest. It can be just like that and it'll work. And now, what you're going to do is place the floors. We already have one there, but you might need to put that piece. And then you go here, and then here. And now all we need is to fill the chests. Each chest costs 10 wood, and this is going to be where most of your wood goes. This is the front of the chest. I could place it this way and it'd look good. But if I place it like this, then you see it's backwards, and I'd get one less circly thing, which looks kind of lame. Usually the chests are easiest to start from the bottom, and then just go up. And the top one's kind of tough, but you'll figure it out. And then rotate and stack the next three. And they're going to be a bit off, as you can see. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Now that we've placed our chests, we can add our trim. All we have to do here is sort of cover up our errors, right? There we go. I actually don't want that one anymore. Boom, we finished each square, and look at that. We now have our stacked chests. And that's the basics of it. Obviously, you could trim it up further if you wanted to. You could do something like this, make it, you know, much more recessed. I don't like to do that, though, because it makes the hitboxes for the chests smaller, and I like having them open and easy to grab. The next step is labeling the chests. One of the reasons that I like to build the chest stacks this way is because they're really easy to label. Labeling may sound simple, but believe it or not, it can actually be rather confusing, because think about it. Okay, if I put this label here, there's four chests next to this label. Which one is it talking about? Okay, and if I put it here, which is it talking about? What if I put it, you know, down here and then this one? You know, it's kind of confusing, especially if you're working with other people. And you want it to be really easy to understand. So somebody who doesn't know where stuff is can come in with a bunch of crap, look around, and really quickly know where to put it. So this is how you do it. To make the signs, you just need two wood and one coal. I don't have any coal right now, so let's toss some wood in this kiln, and I'll get some coal. There we go. Now... To anchor the sign, I could put it here, but again, this is kind of confusing, so my favorite thing to do is to actually put the sign and then place it as far back as possible, but have it show up and cover both chests, just like that. Because this way, the hitboxes don't get covered by the sign, whereas if you're standing in front of it and you put the sign somewhere like here, then it's hard to get to the chest because the hitbox is really small. So. I like it when the sign is much further back that way. But then this presents a different problem. Let's label it with something common like wood. Can you read that easily? I mean, I don't know about you, but that seems like it's kind of pointless as a label. I mean, I can't even tell that there's anything written there from this distance. So to alleviate that, all you do is color equals white in these angle brackets. Okay? And then, boom! Look at that. Now, your sign is easy to see. And what's even crazier, you see this? You can still see the sign. That's the power of using these colors. You can even change it. You can use all sorts of different things. You can see that some of them don't have the power that the white one does there, right? The red's really dark. You can't see it at all. But yellow's kind of bright, right? But the brightest one that I've been able to find of the basic colors is white. 
You can also use the hexadecimal codes for colors if you want, and that gives you a huge variety of different colors, and that's how you get the brightest stuff. And that's why the white signs really make it easier to see. And you can just continue this process throughout each layer. You might have trouble with the top layer, so a good thing to do is be in the habit when you're building of just having a simple, just a tiny ladder next to it. This is going to give you that angle. And the angle is going to allow you to easily place the things that you were struggling with. One thing you'll notice with the signs is that when you're trying to place them, sometimes you'll accidentally place them backwards like this. And then you'll write something on it, right? And then you can't see anything. So that's because you have to make sure that when you place it, you get to see the part with the three dots. And that might be obvious here, but that's because I'm placing it in a well-lit area. Look at this. Can you tell if this is the right side or not? I sure can't. So you have to make sure that you look at it in a well-lit area to know which side is the front. Now we've placed our labels, so we just need to add the color thing. It's a bracket, and then color equals white, and then close the bracket. And then you just type whatever you want. In this case, we're gonna do stone, right? Common resources in the beginning, stone, wood, resin is another common one. And this is the basic module, let's say. I wouldn't go too much higher than this because it becomes increasingly inconvenient to access them. Realistically, here's how much space you would actually need to make everything work and not have a bunch of items everywhere. This also gives you a bit of extra space. I'll go over it real quick. You'll need a lot of space for grade war fives, resin, and wood in the beginning. Whenever you have any extra wood or stone, it's a good habit to build it. There's something this does to you. I, I don't know how to explain it, but when you have the wood in the chests, you sort of forget it's there and you don't build as much. But when you see it out, it's like it invites you to build something. So it's a great habit to build these little stone piles and wood piles with your extra wood. You'll need spaces for other kinds of wood and stone like flint and black marble later in the game, but the other items don't matter that much. The crafting stuff is typically wood, stone, ores, metal, and leather. Then sometimes there'll be like a monster drop thrown in, but for the most part, that's all of it. You might want to have it near where you make things, right? This doesn't need to all be next to each other. You should place them where they're most useful, right? This is more crafting table related, whereas this is more forge related. And then this next area, which is going to be a huge part of your storage, is food and food resources and potions. That's actually one I forgot here. Let's change this. Mead. Haha. <laughs> And these are going to account for, you know, roughly a third of all the items you find. A lot of Valheim is like making the food that you need. And then once you've got the magic stuff, there's magic food. But until then, you just have to worry about stamina food and health food. It's pretty simple. And that's about it. You'll find that no matter how much storage you make in Valheim, you always eventually fill it up. So <laughs> don't fret if you find that things get too full. But make sure that you have enough space and enough storage available so that you can organize it and put things away and you kind of know what to expect. It's going to be a lot less cluttered and your adventure, especially with multiple people, will be more organized and meaningful as a result. That's it for this video, everybody. If you'd like to support my work, then consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. The dedicated Valheim experience is a bit different than when you regularly play multiplayer, because on a dedicated server, your friends can join the world and build stuff when you're not playing, and it really changes the experience, because in a regular Valheim session, you sort of have the main host who plays, and when you want to play on that world, you have to get invited by that person, and they have to be online right then. Right? But people have different schedules, people often can't play all at the same time. So that's the main perk of a dedicated server. There's some other reasons and things that you can get into, but that's all depth and things you could learn about later. For now, just check out that tutorial all about purchasing it from Zap. There's other places you can get it from, but I've used Zap for a long time and they've always treated me well as one of their affiliates, whereas the others don't treat it me as well. So you can have faith at least that I'm working with someone who's paying me well. They give me half of what you pay when you go and use their service, which is a really, really generous 
affiliate relationship. In the affiliate world, a lot of people only do like, you know, 10, 20%. So I get, tip my hat to Zap for that. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and comment below if you have any tutorial ideas that you would like me to check out. I love to make videos in response to what people say in these videos. It really helps me understand where you are at and what kind of things confuse you. And this helps me make better videos for other people in Valheim. Because my goal is to make content that people can watch that makes Valheim more fun for them. Valheim is one of those games that's so challenging, you really can just keep educating yourself and keep learning, and you're still gonna die and face challenges and be screwed over and make mistakes. So you don't need to worry about making the game too easy by learning too much about it. As far as I can tell, it's a creative masterpiece. And personally, I've gotten a lot back from Valheim in my life, as opposed to just something else like World of Warcraft, where you just put it in, and then years pass, and what do you have from it? What did you create? What did you make, you know? Things in Valheim, at least I'm practicing my creativity, at least I'm learning to design things, and that is really beautiful, and I think it's something that more people need in their lives, right? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, see you next time. Bye!